kids. All right, we're gonna try out this method of teaching um, in math for lesson four. We're going to be connecting the place value chart, okay? And you guys have a copy of this at home. So I made a little copy in my notebook and you can do this on your own time. Uh, but we're gonna be connecting the place value chart to the metric system so that you can see how very logical it is. And we're going to use the same strategies we've been using for the last few days, talking about numbers that are adjacent to other numbers in the place value system and how that changes the value by 10, like times 10 if you go to the left or 1 tenth of if you go to the right. So today I wanna to tell you a story to help you understand the metric system uh, prefixes that are gonna live right here on the number line. So here's the story. Once upon a time, there was a village and this village was in a land where they had a king who was just not very well liked. And you're just kind of stuck there living with this king. And so the king is an important figure in our story. So we're going to, right under the thousands, I want you to put a K to help you remember that this story is about a king. Okay. And his name is King Henry. So not a bad name, King Henry, capitalized. So you'll remember that King Henry is this not a bad guy, not a great guy either. And so King Henry lives in this, uh, this land and his people are, you know, just kind of bump along and he's kind of nasty to them and they're like, oh my gosh, I could just really do without this guy. And so imagine their surprise and delight when they hear one day that King Henry died. <laughs> King Henry died. Write this down and how about right there into the tens place, King Henry died. So. Huzzah, they all celebrate and yay, King Henry died. But it's just scandalous. Like, how did he die? Like, this is shocking. All of a sudden, he's gone and now who's gonna take his place? We don't know, but irrelevant. So King Henry died and it was shocking because it was unexpected. So you unexpected. Lee. Unexpectedly. Super long word. We'll have to put the next one above it. Unexpectedly right here in the ones or the units place as the case may be. So King Henry died unexpectedly and this was you know so fantastic for the people. They're like yay little celebrations going on but everyone was talking about it. Why? What happened? Does, does anybody know? Do you know what happened? No I don't know. Do you know what happened? Nope. Nobody knew what happened. So finally, they, they send one of the kids to go to court and to listen. And so this little kid who's just excellent at kind of blending in and he can, he can slip into a room and, and slip out of the room without really being noticed, he finds out that King Henry died unexpectedly while he was drinking. Oh, oh my gosh, it's like, Silly, funny, drinking. Uh, I wonder what he was drinking. <laughs> drinking. So many things that he could have been drinking. Well, the little boy went back the next day. He said, you know what? He tells his family. The family tells the other families. He was drinking. King Henry died unexpectedly from drinking. And sure enough, the families are talking to their neighbors. Did you know he was drinking? No. Did you know he was drinking? No. I always thought he was drinking, but they didn't have any proof. So the next day, the little boy goes back and he, he starts to ask questions as he's cleaning and picking things up. And he says, oh, yes, I wonder what he was drinking. Do you know what he was drinking? Well, yes. <gasps> he found out that King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate 
milk. <gasps> Who knew it could be so dangerous? Well, I never knew it could be so dangerous. So, you know, what you need to think about at this point is that these right here telling this crazy story, which is not true, by the way, it's just very interesting. It's not even realistic fiction. It is just fiction. But we're going to make a little category here, the next line down, so that we can connect our crazy story about King Henry dying unexpectedly, drinking chocolate milk, to the metric system. You're like, why? Why on earth? And how could this possibly connect? Well, these letters here connect with the prefix for the names of the metric system. So you really just need to remember the story about King Henry dying unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk. And if you remember the story with these letters in this order, it will help you to remember the order of the prefixes. So let's write them down. King goes with kilo. And so kilo is going to be a thousand, a thousand ones, kilo. And then there's a term that we don't actually use a whole lot of in fifth grade, um, but we still have to recognize that it's there. So uh, we won't be labeling a lot of things, but it's hecto, like Hector, but hecto. Okay, so kilo hecto. Then the next one is going to start with a D, put your capital D, because you know here it comes. And the next prefix is deca, okay? And so sometimes you'll have um, a K, some, I've seen it written with a K, D-E-K-A, uh, but we're gonna put the C, which is what is on some of the other resources that you have access to. So kilo, hecto, deca, and I'll, I'll show you in a minute what the prefixes will be attached to. Now the U is really important because this is the unit that you'll be using. Well, what is the unit? Well, it depends on what you're measuring. It might be a meter. Okay, so I have some meter sticks in the classroom. When you come back in, you can fiddle around with the meter sticks. You may not have a meter stick at home, but you might have a yard stick. Similar, but the meter stick is just a few inches longer. Meters measure length. How long something is. Um, the UOP pool is 50 meters in length. That's a Olympic sized pool. That's the long way, but on the short way, it's 25 yards. So you can have races that go the short way or races that go the long way for meters. The other unit you could use is liters, L-I-T-E-R. That's for liquid. Okay. The other unit you could use would be gram, and that's gonna be for weight. Some people might say mass. And we'll talk about the difference in science, but for right now, this would be like weight or mass, grams. So if you step on a scale, you could weigh yourself in grams. But if you wanna measure how much liquid, remember if you go get a soda bottle, it's a two liter bottle, that's what it is. And meter, you could measure the length of a swimming pool, how many meters across a, a field, how many meters to the next city. Now let's get back to our prefixes. So kilo, hecto, deca, and unit are for King Henry died unexpectedly. So drinking chocolate milk. I use small letters over here because these are so small. These amounts are less than one. Okay, remember, if this is one, this is one-tenth of one. This is one one-hundredth of one. This is one one-thousandth of one. So what would go here? This would be the deci. Okay, so I'm going to put D-E-C-I. Okay, so it could be a decimeter or a deciliter or a decigram. The C in chocolate is going to uh, give us the centi, centimeter, centiliter, centigram. And the M is for little tiny 
milli, okay? And so that is a millimeter is a little teeny tiny measurement and you can even look at a ruler, okay? And this is a centimeter, see how it says MMCM? So the MMs are the little teeny ones and the centimeters are the numbered ones. So there are 10 millimeters in a centimeter, okay? Because the size of a millimeter is one-tenth the size of one centimeter. So there are 10 of these in one of these. So that's the story of King Henry. And uh, we'll talk more in class and in our lesson about how all these place value positions are related. But let's just leave it at the fact that the units is the ones place. And in the same way we've been talking about numbers that are adjacent or the ones that live right next door to a place, we're gonna operate the same way. So if I have a digit here, this digit here is 10 times the value that it is here. Likewise, if I have a digit here, it is one-tenth the value that it is here. And you can do that anywhere on the place value chart. So I can look up here and I can say, this digit here is 10 times the value of this one, okay? And the digit here is one-tenth the value of this one, whatever the digits may be. If you go to the left, this digit is 10 times the value of this one, okay? Now, if one jump means a difference of 10, then in the same way you can do two jumps. That would be 100 times larger. This number here is 100 times larger than this digit here. So if I have a two in the ones place, and then I multiply it by 100, I'm gonna have 200. So two in the hundreds place has 100 times the value of the two in the ones place. Likewise, a two in the thousands place has a thousand times the value of a two in the ones place, okay? And then when you go to the fractional units and anytime you're moving this way on the place value chart, you're talking about a fraction of the value. So this is one tenth of this, but it's one one hundredth of ones, okay? This is one one hundredth of ones, but it's one one thousandth of tens. And so you're, you're moving around the place value chart, and this is all to just really kind of confirm that you understand all the place value positions, confirm that you understand your um, King Henry story, which will help you remember all of the prefixes for the metric system. And then we'll talk about this lesson, and we'll apply it in lesson four. Hope you guys enjoyed it.